We are not. Thank you, Mr. President. This month, millions of Americans received a very rude awakening as they saw the horrors of human trafficking playing out on the big screen. I say that they had a rude awakening because, until very recently, the fight against modern-day slavery has been an uphill battle on multiple fronts. Transnational criminal organizations have turned the buying and selling of human beings into a $150 billion a year enterprise. And current policy has made it almost impossible to catch them. Of course, the work being done on a federal, state, and local level to help trafficking victims hasn't been made any easier by the astonishing number of people who insist that human trafficking is a myth or that things aren't nearly as bad as advocates make it out to be. That is some truly impressive spin. It is really quite disgusting. And right now, the American people are wondering why that is the message that apparently is driving this administration. And unfortunately, some of my Senate Democrat colleagues, when we have so much evidence to the contrary, human trafficking is an epidemic. Tennesseans have asked me, and they want to know, how could this happen in this country? How could this human trafficking issue have gotten to be so bad, and what are we going to do to stop it? I will tell you, the data does not lie. In the interest of setting the record straight, I want to start by offering to my colleagues a few statistics showing us just how bad things have gotten for the victims of human trafficking. That $150 billion per year figure that I mentioned a few moments ago doesn't come from me. It doesn't come from a nonprofit. Mr. President, this comes from this administration's Department of Homeland Security. That is their assessment. That is their number. If you want to look it up, I encourage you, go to the report that DHS issued in January. You're going to find that stat on page two of that report. Yes, indeed, selling of human beings, trafficking of human beings is indeed a $150 billion a year business. And it is happening right here. Every community, every state, all across this country. Should we accept that? Absolutely not. Here's another one for you. DHS also estimates that there are, get this number, 30 million victims of sex trafficking and forced labor around the world. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation estimates that on average in the United States, a child is bought or sold for sex every two minutes. Think about that. Every two minutes, a child, a child is bought or sold for sex every two minutes. This is what is going on. This is what is happening right here. Modern day slavery, you better believe it's modern day slavery. In fiscal year 2022, DHS alone, just DHS, helped 765 confirmed victims of human trafficking. 
they initiated another 1,373 cases and made 3,655 arrests. As of this January, they had convicted 638 traffickers and indicted another 1,045. In 2022, the number of investigations, arrests, indictments, and convictions all increased from the previous year. So it's safe to say the cartels and the traffickers, they're gaining ground. They're gaining power. And again, this is not my educated guess. You can find every bit of that information on page six of the report that DHS put out in January of this year. So Mr. President, human trafficking is not a myth. Our concern is not overblown. These criminals, criminals, violent, vicious criminals are hiding in plain view in your cities, in your communities, in your states. They are selling human beings. They're setting a price. It is disgusting. In 2021, the National Human Trafficking Hotline received 525 reports from Good Samaritans in Tennessee concerned about potential human trafficking. That year, advocates identified 152 confirmed cases involving 217 victims. That's 217 people identified by one organization in one state. Think about that one. And that stat is two years old. Human trafficking has grown from a $500 million a year business about four years ago to a $150 billion a year business. And Tennessee's not the only one. 217 victims in Tennessee. Mr. President, Massachusetts had 143 victims. Michigan identified 429 victims. California, 2,122 victims. Georgia, 1,065 victims. You know, the list goes on and on. Texas, 1,702 victims. It's all there in the DHS report. If you drill down to the local level, you're going to see it gets even worse because this is where the survivors come for help. The Community Coalition Against Human Trafficking, which serves survivors in the Knoxville, Tennessee area, handled 408 referrals in 2022. The situation was a dire, or so they thought. And yes, indeed it is. But guess what, Mr. President? This year, it is worse. I know that other organizations around our state, in Jackson, in Franklin, Chattanooga, Nashville, Memphis, Powell, Dayton, and Cleveland, they're all telling me the same story. I don't know how any serious person could look at these numbers and claim that the horror stories these advocates have heard are part of some elaborate conspiracy theory to say that human trafficking is not happening, to say that, well, it's a falsehood meant to distract from the root causes of human trafficking. No, it is happening. The stats show it. Now, we do know for a fact that our wide open southern border is enabling this disgusting practice. Many of the people who fall into the hands of the cartel smugglers are trafficked by their captors. Yes, indeed. Many are women. Many are children. They are physically, mentally, emotionally, and sexually abused as they make their journey to that southern border. But don't take my word for it. Ask the Department of Homeland Security. Now, they know it's an issue 
So they've allocated more than $60 million to the counter-human smuggler campaign and sent more than 1,300 personnel to the southern border and into Latin America to try and stop it. DHS has identified a problem at the border. So why can't Congress put politics aside and do the same thing and admit that these children, these women, need our attention and our help? This is a humanitarian crisis. This year, I've introduced two bills that would throw a wrench in the operations of these trafficking rings and help the local border patrol and local law enforcement regain some ground in this fight that they seem to be losing. The Save Girls Act would establish a $50 million grant program for states, localities, NGOs that work to prevent the smuggling and trafficking of young women and girls. We know that most of the innocent people who end up in the hands of sex traffickers are indeed young women and girls. And even if they do manage to escape, we see many of these women fall victim to domestic violence and to drug abuse. They are trapped in a system. If the federal government is not going to secure that border and stop this, it ends up with local entities. That is why the Save Girls Act would put resources into the hands of these local law enforcement agencies and NGOs who are trying to rescue and save these women and girls from this. Heightened border security is a necessity, but it won't save the women who've already been forced into servitude. And as I said, many of them are in your communities. They're hiding in plain sight. Having those funds locally will help to save them. But there are also things we can do directly at the border to pull young women out of the hands of traffickers before they disappear into the country. Last month, I reintroduced my In Child Trafficking Now Act, which would crack down on the practice of child recycling, which is horrendous, absolutely disgusting. It would mandate DNA testing for migrants coming across the border with children. My bill would require up to a 10-year prison sentence for any person who lies about their familial relationship with a minor. If this sounds familiar, it's because it's an old policy that was very successful in the previous administration because the data that was collected from that one pilot program what we learned from that was that 30% of the children presenting at that southern border, 30% have no relation at all whatsoever to the adult that is bringing them to that border. These children are enslaved. And what happens? that adult gets through, they send that child back to the cartel and they attach them to another adult the cartel is trying to get into the country. Passing the In Child Trafficking Now Act and implementing DNA testing at that border would help save lives. This is something that we should do on a bipartisan basis. The problem of human trafficking is intertwined with so many other issues that we are charged with handling every day. And you can find connections to border policy, immigration law, criminal justice, and even to the NDAA and defense policy. As many of my colleagues know, I filed the In Child Trafficking Now Act 
in the form of an amendment to the NDAA, and I've asked for a floor vote on this issue. The U.S. Senate should be heard on this issue. So, of course, I ask for support of that amendment. But no matter what people decide to do on this, I would remind my Democratic colleagues that they cannot hide from this issue just because it would force them to ask some serious questions and policies about the policies of this administration. The American people are figuring this out. Every two seconds, a child is trafficked and sold for sex. Excuse me, every two minutes, they are trafficked. They are sold for sex. What they've seen this month has driven them to start asking questions. And I'm so glad so many Tennesseans have paid attention to the media around this issue. The Nashville Anti-Human Trafficking Coalition normally welcomes about three new volunteers every week. Now, on average, 38 new volunteers per week are reaching out and saying, tell me what I can do to help rid our community, our state, our nation of this problem. I hope other organizations across the state and the country are seeing the same wave of support. Advocates who work with victims of sex and labor trafficking refer to this as modern day slavery. And if you look at the pictures, if you listen to these survivors that have been rescued, tell their stories about their experience, you would see why. They've been raped, abused, stripped of their dignity. They live in fear. And many of them have been in bondage so long that they have lost their sense of self. These people deserve better from us and from this administration and our president. At the very least, they deserve a government that recognizes that indeed their lives are worth saving. I yield the floor. Senator from Pennsylvania. Thank you, Mr. President. 